The Senate recognizes Senator Vaughn, born of Renwall. Senator, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Fellow members of the Senate, defenders of our beloved realm, I'm given to understand some of us here have given up hope. Uh, some of us have already begun preparing their next of kin to succeed them. Perhaps they'd be kind enough to vacate their seats in the Senate as well. <laughs> Why should this be the end of the story? Yes, armies of evil ring our city, but the city still stands. Yes, some chosen have become corrupted and twisted, but the city yet stands. Yes, the fires burn and the skies fall, but the city still stands. We are still here. We stand and live and breathe as we did yesterday and the day before. And, and what of tomorrow, then? Mm, and, and what of tomorrow? Indeed, indeed. I, I do not know what comes tomorrow. None do, save perhaps Senator Sofina, and she shares nothing. <laughs> what I do know is that today our walls are secure, our people are safe, and the Warden of Justice is once again ensconced in our sacred chamber. The Consonant Legion returns, and no matter what you may think of the Legion, it brings with it one thing. New possibility. They marched the length of Zel Shael and survived. They triumph over the Never. They escorted two chosen and refugees beyond the counting through our gates. What of tomorrow? Senators, now that the Legion is here, anything is possible. At long last, you have made it to the capital. Uh, we would usually see the dreaded secondary mission now, but there was none in this circumstance. There was simply the primary mission to distract or otherwise deal with the Never forces as they conducted their ritual. Uh, you did so successfully, and the Never were airborne for a short period of time. Airborne and not in control of themselves is an important distinction there, I think. Uh, they probably came down after a period of time. Uh, but during that window, you managed to enter Novara. Pretty good entrance. Do we want to describe that scene before we get into the mechanics of downtime? I think so. We had a, a use of horses, right? So I think I think it just it turns into basically like a procession, right? Like we go down the thorough like the like the whatever the main road is, right? people come into their windows it's it's winter so everybody's bundled up and it hasn't been like a super cool time in the city and there's this loud noise of all these horses and people as we bring in these refugees as well and these two separate legions yeah and it's it's already crammed full of people mm -hmm. right it's already been under siege now there's you know there's an, an army suddenly coming inside along with the refugee train and any caravans and other stragglers that have been like desperate to get inside. 
there's all this activity. There's cheering, but there's a lot of shouting of like, oh, you know, there's an army. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. Mm-hmm. People don't want to get trampled. Oh, they don't need to worry about that. It's going to be a czar and Sarah Kali who are leading the procession. Ah, the very picture of order. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait. So Sarah Kali was on the mission. She uh, she and the Star Vipers had to rejoin the army. So, well, you you mentioned that we'd made able to rejoin, and so I think Azar specifically waited. Like, were we able to get people through the front door? Ye- we should have. <laughs> yeah, sort of. It's it's definitely one of the main gates into the city, if that makes sense. Um, but I like the the notion that the Legion gets there, gets to the entrance, and isn't in a panicked rush to get inside. It's like, all right, we're going to defend this position. You know, if, if there was a secondary mission, it would almost be like there's uh, squads responsible for holding the line there at the city as everyone else gets inside, right? The, you know, all of the refugees, all of the caravans have to get in and then wait until the star vipers uh, and the chosen um, and everyone else, that was on the mission actually arrives and gets inside. And I think the procession goes all the way to like the front steps of the Senate and uh, Azar dismounts. And there's probably like guards coming down from the Senate and a few other people walking down like a whole bunch of steps. And I think Azar, I, yeah, go ahead. I imagine there's like a top down shot of as people are coming in, like it's, it starts as this like thin column, but it just gets wider and wider as more people just, uh, boom into the city and so you're covering multiple streets and mm-hmm. so you're coming to this uh center square from like multiple streets all coming together yeah again is sarah Kali well liked she's well known at least i think we'd have to figure that out <laughs> she's the living embodiment of the senate right of yeah yeah of democracy she's the so, she's the whip of the senate it depends on how much they like the Senate, I guess. <laughs> I think in my head, Sarah Colley has always um, like the most public thing Sarah Colley does is when she decides to pub, uh, punish a senator. Cool. What does that look like? Um, I think it looks like regular everyday things happening in the Senate. And Sarah Colley is usually just like standing in a corner like behind the speaker or whatever we have uh, the equivalent chief senator first senator whatever and uh her eyes suddenly she opens her eyes and immediately all the senators stop talking uh and she looks at one person in particular and asks them a question and when they give her the answer that they have to give her because of the way her eyes work, uh-huh. she walks forward and grabs them and picks them up and pulls them out of the Senate. And I think she might just kill them on the steps of the Senate. Damn. What if, because Udet was executed for killing a senator. Mm-hmm. So what if the senator, I don't know, gets flogged or something? Mm-hmm. Uh, by Sarah Colley and then stripped of their titles. Sure, that makes sense. Their station. Yeah, but they're they're allowed to remain in the city, maybe. Maybe sometimes they're ostracized. Sure. Sure. It probably sense. depends on the severity of the crime. Yeah. And maybe sometimes she kills a senator. But like, I think sometimes she definitely kills a senator. Yeah. It's been a long time. You're gonna kill a senator. Oh yes. Um so I think I think there are my sense would be that Sarah Colley is well liked among people who don't who people who would be more empathetic towards non senators than senators. <laughs> um, so like I think the rich people do not like Sarah Colley. I think they are scared of Sarah Colley. <laughs> I think that the common people of the city, quote unquote, common like Sarah Colley, if only because she makes things really exciting <laughs> when she's in the Senate. <laughs> yeah, that's the same reason I like her. I think people are a little burned out about excitement. Sure. Well, I mean, I think, yeah, I think this has been a really shitty time, but like a miracle just happened. 
Right? Oh, Sarah Colley's back. We're going to live. Absolutely. Well, Sarah Colley's <laughs> back, and the Never are floating in the sky. And for tonight, nobody has to man the walls except to, like, do target practice at Never. Like, that's a miracle. <laughs> like, straight up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, two Chosen just came back. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think that Azar leads the procession to the front of the Senate and uh, gets down off his horse and then in the, the loudest he's ever been announces, uh, uh, we have returned your chosen to you. <laughs> That's a way to put it. Rejoice, Senate. <laughs> the Legion has returned. Great. Good. Yeah, all of the senators are there. All of them have streamed out of the building in this big crowd. Uh, and they're all cheering. They all applaud. Um, whether that's uh, genuine or not is mm-hmm. to decide, but they are all cheering. They're, uh, if nothing else, pleased to have their chosen back. Uh, Sarah Kali marches, her armor blood spattered, her skin bruised from the battle with Whisper. Uh, but she grimly makes her way up the steps into the Senate where she belongs. There we go. I I don't think Marshall's there. I think Marshall is at the back of the the procession doing actual work. Sure, sure, sure. Do we think the like command staff have their like places that they need to go in the city? I don't know. We almost definitely talked about it before we got here. <laughs> yeah, like we gotta figure out where where you set up camp for this many people when the city is already chock full of people. Like, I imagine Cravander has a lot of work to do. Yeah. I bet Cravander actually has a lot less work to do now. Because the refugees, uh, we got them here. They're not our problem. No. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe Cravander, I mean, we don't actually have extra supply, but this is this is the city to buy supplies. Yeah. Uh-huh. I also wonder if there's like some sort of like hall of lore in the city or something that Kale would need to step in. Well, I, th- I think there's absolutely to. a big hall, a big library, but it's almost certainly being used as a refugee center right now. Um, I think it's more like less a library and more like a repository for cultural traditions and stuff. It's maybe more of a museum, but it, there's absolutely something like that. Yeah. I mean, Kale dabbles in cultural traditions. Where do you think the Legion ends up? Like, is there a building set aside or something you just start occupying or a particular district of the city? What what do we think would be the most interesting place for the Legion to be while you're here? Where would a democracy put a mercenary standing army? Jail. (laughs) (laughs) Um... My suggestion would be that Azar's dad has an estate. In the city? Yes, in the city. Oh, of course. Oh, my God. He's a senator. This is very berserk. This is very berserk. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now that, Gavin, you're reading berserk, finally, like, all my, all my references are going to make sense to you. It's going to be great. Yes. I get it now. <laughs> I mean, are we just, like, in the stables and shit at the manor? <laughs> I think there was, like, a big um, garden and I bet that Azar's dad knew we were all coming. Explicitly, like textually, he uh-huh. knew. And, came and so I think that, that he yeah. raised the garden before we got there. What the fuck? <laughs> and so it's just a big open plane like that you'd use for like a fair or something. And we just set up with our regular tents there. Well, maybe there was like a double purpose too, because like the city was under siege. So maybe like whatever was edible in the garden was instantly harvested. For the people. Devin, that's so optimistic of you that you think that anything edible would be in this garden. <laughs> <laughs> Feels like it would be one of those, like, extremely manicured and and topiary, like, French gardens. Uh-huh. Right. Uh-huh. I'm sort of imagining it like the, like, palm trees in Dune. <laughs> <laughs> There's just a pile of shredded wood in the corner that's Use this uh, to start fires in the cold air. Mm-hmm. There's mm-hmm. uh, there's a raised platform, almost like a stage used for like garden parties and stuff like that, um, but is now just a graveyard for each of the individual types of flower. Nice. That Vaughn was cultivating here. There's like just piles of petals and roots and stuff. 
Ah, uh, so he passive aggressively tells us what the cost of our our stay exactly. Is. <laughs> Suleiman's mad that they didn't like save any of the like rare herbs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, Commander Mark changes to pressure, time, and intel as a result of the mission. Um, so time thankfully doesn't increase. Oh no, that that'd be later as a result of missions. Right, right, right. I don't think. Did we get anything for this mission for a success besides uh, you time? You got increasing? a lot, actually. So much uh, wow. you got, oh my god! One, one one favor. You got minus one time. You got plus three morale. You got plus one favor. Pressure does not increase, and uh, this is the second part of a pair, which means I guess Sarah Kali comes back at a certain point and gives you plus one intel. Christ. Yeah, I mean, maybe maybe there is a. In like the HBO version of this, maybe like as Sarah Kali and Azar are riding like shoulder to shoulder on a, a pair of horses, uh, Sarah Kali like leans over and just like whispers something in Azar's ear. Sure. Okay. That's good. That's good. Okay. So Intel up by one. Um, I, would, I will subtract one of the times. Uh, we have only three ticks in time now as opposed to four that we had earlier. And we can't go any higher in morale. Um I guess I'll just go ahead and put one favor down here. There we go. Uh, we don't have su- we don't have any changes to supplies or assets. We've already noted the morale. So, Lorekeeper, please select and lead a back at camp scene. Hmm. Okay. So, we are completely out of high morale scenes. Hmm. Well. So they're going to be medium or low from now on. We only got a couple medium left, too. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. Um, let's see here. Um, these uh, amongst our. Oh, what's up? I was going to say these medium scenes that are left are interesting. Yeah, I think I know which one I'm going to pick. Um, but the question uh, before I, I reveal which one I'm picking is of, of our of our legion. We don't really have anybody that's like known to be kind of a sketchy individual, right? Of our, amongst our, like, legionnaires. Yeah, just to lay him on. Define sketchy. There's probably someone who we haven't named yet. Someone who, I don't know, might be caught selling supplies to locals for special treatment or favors, maybe. Well, yeah, that's the one I was going to say. And the thing I thought might be kind of interesting as a, uh, a unique supply item that the, this, Sketchy Legionnaire might be selling to uh, uh, locals is Liberty. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, Suleiman's hot new... Uh, hot new drug. Hot new drug. <laughs> <laughs> Rejoice, senators. <laughs> okay, who are our soldiers as for options here? Because this is explicitly a soldier. It's not a capital S soldier, though, so I feel like it could be anybody. Sure. Mm-hmm. I, I could think... I, I don't think it's Suleiman because I think it has to be someone that's sworn to the Legion, but there are like a half dozen people I would accuse of something like this. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So let me go through the soldiers. We've got Thar, Walut, mm-hmm. Ashling. I don't think it's any of them. No. We've I can got see Thar. Rahel. Um, I guess we could make arguments for Thar. I could make arguments for Rahel. Okay. Uh, Obik, I, I don't really want to see... T- the the first thing to see. <laughs> oh, that's a that's um, a very special episode, though. That's some Saturday morning cartoon shit. Yeah. Then we got a nameless soldier who also came with Obik. Le Guin, the really sketchy soldier. No, see, we got to pronounce it the French way. It's Le Guin. Le Guin. Le Guin. Le Guin. Le Guin. Le Guin. I'm kind of feeling Thar. I mean, yeah, let's is, is Thar like the ambitious type? Yeah, like the, uh, hustle yes, and grind is. type. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Thar thinks he's gonna be fifth Okage. Right. Yeah, believe it. On the on the on the Pokemon uh, evolution chain, it's Thar, Lance, Azar. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes. Exactly. exactly. I could definitely see Lance selling drugs. Has Azar sold drugs God. before? Um, no. Azar was uh, buying drugs from other people. Hmm. I was about to say, is Azar like straight edge for some reason? No. No, Azar get along with the other Legion much better. But you know what we have seen Thar do? We have seen Thar like on Suleiman's, you know, orders, like go and take shit from 
the supply wagons. Mm. So I could see him like using that as like, oh, uh, Suleiman told me to do it, like using that as an excuse again. Yeah. Oh, to yeah. not get in trouble about it. But maybe I- I'm imagining him almost like trying to sell this to like local, um, like whatever like mafia types would be like in the city for like favors and influence. Oh, he's selling it to senators, uh, scribes and stuff. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. That is good. Yeah. yeah. And he's, he, he's bringing something back to the campfire, you know, for the debrief mm-hmm. for the mm-hmm. star vipers. But he's caught, right? That's the prompt. So who yeah. catches him? <laughs> Sarah Colley? Oh, no. no. <laughs> God, no. Maybe it's Curvander. Let's have oh, a Curvander I love Darcy. Her. That's good. That's good. Oh, I like boy. that. Curvator at that, Chris? Often has to be like accidental cop. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do like that because also I was considered like, I know we're at full morale, but I'm like, so many people are stressed that I was considering doing a liberty this time. So go just imagine Curvander looking for like, where the crap is it? Yep. Good. <laughs> I know good. we have, I know we have more. And then just like, you know, it's going to do the thing again of like going out just around the camp in this like, that we've built in this former garden, right, is gonna go and look and, like, kind of, like, pauses. Thar has, like, this cake just, like, open to the air that he's walking with. It's <laughs> Excellent. Like, Good. White icing. Oh, my God. He's just, like, parading around with it, like, look what I have, a cake. And no, the no, he's just, like, watching him. Oh. He, like, sees you looking at him and, like, directly turns in a different direction. <laughs> <laughs> and starts walking in that direction. Like, please don't see me. Uh, just the like face palm of like this again catches up. You know, I think where you're trying to walk really fast, but also you're trying to balance this cake. It's a big cake. Those are heavy. Uh, quartermaster. Um, well, uh, as a soldier, uh, I've been, you know, working on my dexterity. I'm, I'm pretty confident in carrying this <laughs> steps over a hole. Uh, this cake. <laughs> Fantastic. I love your dedication. Thank you. Where did this cake come from? Um, and what was the... Uh, hmm, trying to figure out, like, what was traded to get it, right? Like, what, what, what was used to purchase it? Uh, I... So... Um, I'm friends with some of the refugees from the Well Vicario, and... Uh, there, they told me that their, um, uh, cousin was a baker, and if I brought them here alive, that they'd get me a cake, or, or you know, something baked, you know, I, I wasn't expecting, you know, this, really, but, you know, <laughs> I'm not gonna say no to this, just look at it. Um, but, uh, so I, 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 tr- I was, did the mercenary thing. I traded services for this cake. You, you, you know that face you make when you know someone is lying to you, but you're just waiting to see if they're going to cop to it or if they're just going <laughs> to dig that hole deeper. Well, just digging that hole. Yep. Cremander is just, it's making that face at Thar, just waiting, really hoping, just giving him all the time in the world to just be like... Just come clean about it and then just, uh. Oh, Quartermaster, I'd love to share this cake with you, but I did promise my squad mates a slice. So if you'd like a slice, I could, if we're, if there's any left over, I'd be happy to, um, share. So, so here's a question. Do we have any liberty left? Or like, what, like, this curv- like, is there something on Thar that, like, gives it away that he had this? That he had the, the liberty? I think it has to, right? Because he gets caught here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think Maybe he kept some for himself. I, me- like, he still has a bottle. Does Kerv- yeah, of course. I mean, this is a cake and liberty yeah. party yeah. just for the Does Kravander mm-hmm. ask him to turn out his pockets? Uh, Kravander's Camorty, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What if it has, like, some sort of 
nose that can smell <laughs> drugs. <laughs> it's their own, our own drug sniffing dog. No. God. It, it does smell pretty rank. That's true. It's got to smell some kind of weird. It's made out of corruption, too. So it's. Like this is, this is true. There's a whole lot of. There's a whole lot of. You have this. Um, especially for someone who's always going through the supplies and is like very familiar with all of the things we have with us. It's like, okay, but I know you have this. Um, Mm -hmm. Oh, you know what? I think, I think, uh, I wonder if Commander like kind of invites thought, like I promise this to my squad. It's just like, oh, well you've, you're a mercenary, you're going to have to learn how to make better deals than that. Invites Thar to stand up on that sort of like raised platform. That is the, the, various flower types graveyard it's just like do you want to share with the whole legion what you've found right what you've managed to acquire like yeah Uh, listen you got this we're going to divvy it up with everyone including what is in your pockets but but uh, well it's a big cake but it's not that big uh i think kravander just puts a hand on thar's shoulder leans and is like welcome to being a quartermaster and just escorts him to the to the platform oh uh, (laughs) Well, is just like yeah. not giving him anywhere to go. Quarter. Calling people in like everyone, everyone. Thar has something to announce to us. Thar's <laughs> found something. Thar's made a discovery, a trade. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like oh. when someone brings a cake for, for someone's birthday at work, you're all just like, what, what kind? What kind is it, though? <laughs> uh. Oh, give me give me a quarter piece. I want a quarter. Some of the legionnaires are like watching and snickering at this whole exchange. They are like actively upset, like trying not to cry. Um, oh. <laughs> uh well, uh yeah. Every I got a cake from a, a, a refugee's cousin from the well of Arcario. Oh, they had a cousin. Lives here, they had a cousin. has a bakery. And uh uh, everyone can have a, a piece, a taste of the, you know, if you can, there's cake. Mm-hmm. Just trying to spin it as like, this is Thar doing something good for the whole Legion, but like just mm-hmm. utterly not getting there. Yep. And Cravander is just like standing right behind him, arms crossed, no selling it. <laughs> <laughs> like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Soldiers looking at each other in the crowd, realizing that there's not nearly enough cake for everyone, and the people start shouldering their way to the front. So everyone should uh, enjoy a little bit of this cake. Uh, Ricky's already because, reaching their hands in to get handfuls uh, of hold cake. Hold on. I gotta slice it first. Ignored, grab, uh, grab. And I, I think Cravander, like, sort of, like, butts in there, like, you know what, actually? You're a soldier, and congratulations, but divvying things up is kind of my specialty and just like has a <laughs> knife in its pocket right like you gotta have oh, knives and just starts oh, cutting Kravander it up definitely has a knife yeah has many probably oh Cravander's a knife guy a knife for mm-hmm. has a butter knife it's like why do you have that don't worry about it sometimes you need that and just like pulls out a knife you know wipes it quote unquote clean uh and then just starts cutting up this cake and is just like making sure Thar sees the very small pieces that it is getting divided into. Is it making like <laughs> eye contact with Thar the uh-huh, whole time too? Yep. <laughs> Thar's just trying and then, not to shake. And just being Holding like, all right, everybody, uh, you're probably not going to need a plate. These are going to be pretty small. Just hands out. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> One at a time, please. Thank cubes. you. I am, I am watching whose hands go where. So no seconds. All right. And like, it's just not enough cake. It's not just enough. not enough. No. Yeah. Like, there are people in this line who are just now angry at Thar for not yeah. getting cake. Uh-huh. Who are not going to get cake. Thar is one of the people who does not get cake. And Kravander's just like, oh, sorry about that. But, you know, such is, such is dealing with supplies. There's just not always enough for everyone. And sometimes some of us go without. God, Thar is getting fucking roasted. <laughs> uh huh. Have a nice afternoon, Sar. And then just like picks up the box and walks away.
Uh, commuter, mark plus one time. Do not mark plus one pressure. Okay, I won't. All right, fine. Gosh. Good. Good. <laughs> Quartermaster, no uh, minus one food. All righty. I should get some food uh, while we're here. Not enough people have died. <laughs> uh, for a for a, for a for a tale of the legion. Yeah, yeah I was like, well, that's one way to put it. Uh, quartermaster, you get two free campaign actions. Okay, so I have two free ones. One of those should probably be R and R, because there's there's a couple of actually. I think it still might just be Kayo and Ifa. Someone got injured on the on this last mission. Was it no? By the, end, Ashling? by the end of it, nobody had any injuries. Ashling has scorched. Oh, is that true? Yeah, level one harm. Oh, I Ashling, think from De- the explosives. Devin, you should have gotten rid of that. With a tonic. Oh, okay. Oh, did, did they get a tonics? Yeah. Right, 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 right. That makes sense. Excellent. Okay. Mm. Ashling is very stressed, though. <laughs> Yeah, that's why I wanted to do Liberty, because I know a lot of people got a bunch of stress, uh, but at the same time, we have so much morale. <laughs> it feels like a waste. Oh, it feels like a waste. Oh, it's the worst feeling. We could do, we could do regular Liberty. That's, that at least clears a little bit. It would only clear two. I would simply just not use those characters. <laughs> <laughs> I would simply not use half of our... Half of our specialists. You have the other half. Mm-hmm. That's true. That's fair. That is Aoife's fair. Aoife's raring to get out there. Yeah. Aoife was like, but I'm the sniper. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm glad I got to play Ashling in that mission because Ashling was fucking sick on that mission. True. But, mm-hmm. you know. They were. Yeah. Kind of body to narrow, so that was great. Um, maybe, maybe start with whatever your other one yeah. is and then make a yeah. decision on this. Yeah, uh, I want to acquire some food because we're going to run out soon. Let's do it. Send a specialist to beg, borrow, or steal an asset the Legion needs. Who is going to go do this? Lance is generally the acquire assets one because yep. it's Lance. It could be Lance. Um, I I kind of like... Thar's not a specialist, I guess, but... <laughs> Are being sent to go grocery shopping. Yeah, the same way that <laughs> um, Lark has Walut under her wing now, Kravinder might be like, all right, you know what? You know what you need? Thar has to shadow Lance. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, because Kravander loves Lance. Okay, Kravander on, and Lance are on. buds. Th- this is the most fail upwards fucking scenario <laughs> I've ever heard. That's true. That's true. Getting to be around Lance. And I do, I want us to know that that is what is happening here if we are going to continue. That's deeply it. deliberate, on my part at least. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. I mean, like, Cravander could see it as like a, a right? Like, because A, Cravander thinks Lance is swell, you know, aside from the whole court martial thing. But like, ah. Uh, mm-hmm. um, and then. The dude weirdly gets results. <laughs> He is good at what he does. Yep. And Thar, like, will listen to Lance. Lance is already in charge of, like, training regiment for rookies stuff. Exactly. exactly. It's like, here, take Thar with you to, like, carry shit. I think mm-hmm. that Kravander also has, like, no offense, Chris, but, like, big kindergarten teacher energy. Yeah, 100%. That, that yep. whole last scene was just like, you know, did you bring enough for the whole class when someone has chips or something? And so I think it being like, well, obviously the solution here is to <laughs> productively channel <laughs> these mm-hmm. impulses. Here's your reading buddy from the fourth grade. Go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Like Lance, Lance, Lance. While you're while you're you know going out to get stuff, take take Thar with you. He can just carry stuff, but for now, just ah, uh, he keeps if he insists on doing this. At least let him see how to. Vander also might not have the best judgment. It's just like, well, Lance is good at stuff. That'll be fine. <laughs> mm. Anywho. Anywho. I'm going to roll dice now. 2d6. Two of them. Yeah. Are there any weird special rules for this place, or is this 
the one. I don't think so. I think it's just 2d6. Baller. Wow. Holy shit. Oh, there's a crit! <laughs> wow! Oh, no. What? This no, is it's a good the greatest crit. fail up. <laughs> <laughs> the greatest fail. <laughs> <laughs> this is the greatest fail upward of all time. Oh, that's no so good. No lessons were learned ever again. It's- yeah, Lance is so annoying, but every time he puts his mind to something, shit gets fucking done. <laughs> oh, it's so He's, annoying. How do Lance and Thar come back with exceptional quality food? Fucking um, hell. Um, is, is exceptional quality just like really nice food or is it a lot of food? I think it's both. I think you have to get something real special here. I, I, could, I could see like if it's if it's extra uses like we've had before i could see it being like you know cravander sends them out with you know a wagon to like put the stuff in and they come back with the wagon just like piled super high uh-huh. plus like a bunch of people who are helping them carry the stuff uh yeah. people who like lance and thar are telling about the the mission just that like <laughs> of sending the never into the sky they just like gathered a group of people who are just like <laughs> hey come with us it's like we'll, we'll, we'll give you a tour of the camp and shit like <laughs> Well, Thar has lots so, of new friends in the Senate now. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. I think, what, I think what happened is Thar said that he, like, made friends with a baker's cousin. Lance actually made friends with <laughs> well, a warehouse conglomerate family mm-hmm, or something. Mm-hmm. <sighs> my, so my suggestion, I have a slightly different take on this, but I think it's very similar to your, what you were saying, Gavin, um, just to get it out there. Um, there were probably other people who were like merchants who were not able to get into the capital because of the horde of never surrounding it. Oh, Mm. and normally that mission as written is just about like squeezing our legion into the capital or into this city rather. Um, I don't know what they call it in the base game because I haven't looked at that. Um, But in this case, because we put all the never in the sky for a little bit, put them in timeout. I think probably a lot of like caravans that were waiting to get in the capital were able to do that in that period. Mm-hmm. And so and while Lance the, made friends with them. Exactly. Right. They, yeah. They recognize Lance cause he had that flag on his back the whole goddamn time. I'll tell you exactly uh, who, he, what Lance found trail boss Kagashi who y'all helped back in Sarpot, the, the caravan, the caravaneer uh. oh. who was trying to get to the East. He is just here. Um, I think that's also good because we talked about like the the Senate being low on supplies, the capital being low on supplies. But I think that like for at least the next, you know, week that we're here, there will be enough. Barely, but enough. That comes back with another cake for everyone else who didn't get a piece. <laughs> <laughs> he does, and he hands it out personally. Mm-hmm. This is Lance's instruction to him. <laughs> right. So yes. here's what yeah. you do. Kid, just listen to me. <laughs> Take it from me, kid. You're going to go far. <laughs> Christ. And whatever you do, don't apologize to Provander <laughs> about stealing the liberty unless it grills you very hard about it. Cravander seeing this and like, I hope I haven't just made things worse. Mm. <laughs> Cravander just anxiously eating a slice of cake. I, I mean, I think Cravander is overjoyed <laughs> that like... At least, yeah, at you first. know, that, 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 yeah, that thing of just like being, you know, thrilled that there's all this extra food. Thar even like brought a cake, but then like seeing Thar hand out the cake is just like, I may have created a monster here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fan of the players, here's what we're gonna do. This has gone so well. You you went through hell to get here, um, and everyone needs respite, right? Like you need food, but you need. Like I think even once you're in the city, city people are still on edge. People are like not mm. quite Shit. willing to like shake it off just yet. And Lance sees this and goes out and brings back a feast. Right? He's you. He and Thar and so many more hangers on are bringing in meats and breads and vegetables and spices and drinks and stuff, and it just keeps coming. Um, and everyone, and once people see that, then people go like, oh, we're here. We arrived. It's, it's going to be okay. Um, I, so I think what you get here is you get two instances of food, each of which has four uses because there's so much of it. And then I think 
In addition to that, because you got this crit, the effect is that in addition to getting that food, you get the results of a regular liberty action. Wow. You get the stress Thick. relief. Because everyone is able to just eat. They can fill their bellies. They can finally just like sit and go, okay, we're in the walls. There's never in the sky for just a moment. Everyone can let their guard down. All right. Everybody take two stress off your characters then. Who am I to stand in the way of Abuna Lance getting things done? <laughs> and Avray finally giving us a win. It's, I mean, you did roll sixes for the entire wild. previous <laughs> I'm scared for the rest of this game. Just saying. <laughs> I mean, you should be scared anyways. This is a scary game. Well, what do you want to do with your other one then, Chris? <laughs> Whew, yeah. Um, should maybe work on this, on this long-term project for the, for the training regimen. Oh, right. Yeah. Ways to get extra EXP. Yeah, which is also Lance. Just all Lance all the time here. Should that have ticked up one by default? Yeah, it, it ticks up now if you have a reason for it to. If, Ma- for, if Mal yeah, or if, if Blacksmith Mal can, can help. help. Yeah, I thought we said uh, that she was making weights. Is that not right? Yeah. Either no. weights or like if they're doing weapons training. I don't know if stuff break like a sword breaks, you fix it. Laborers tick up projects uh, even if it isn't rolled. Right. Just every day. Yeah, that works. I wonder, is there any kind of like a little bit of a performance element to it too? <laughs> it's like we're in the city and like people might like I mm. there's probably a wall around this estate, but is there a thing of like people like trying to look in through like fences oh, or definitely. gates and being like, oh, what's happening in there? Especially after Lance and Thar did the whole like, hey, we brought all of this food and like eight new best friends. Uh, well, first of all, is the other Legion also here? Like, are they also camped out at the estate? Hmm. Um, does that benefit <laughs> them? By them, I mean Azar and Vaughn. <laughs> I mean, as far as the rest of the city is concerned, they don't know that there's two Legions, right? They don't know about the split. Whoa, sure. that's true. That's fair. Cool. Okay. Yeah, they yeah I mean, considering what it took to get everyone inside, I don't think they're going out of their way to challenge your authority at the moment. In which case, I think because if the other Legion is here and Lance is doing uh, training in the yard, I think Lance would probably arrange like a mini tournament or exhibition or something like that, right? Like would be very, very like show us <laughs> I what I think you Azar got. would specifically instruct Lance to move the, the training closer good, to the wall. Good, good, good. Very good. Eva's leading like a, a little like shooting gallery game. Nice. <laughs> So Lance is leading. This is probably Marshall is the action. Probably. It's that or discipline. Yeah. Discipline would be more nice because there's more dices there. Uh, what is the difference between discipline and Marshall again? This is my new study and survey. Uh, Marshall, you direct a squad or a group of people to action. Discipline, you compel obedience with your force of personality. Does feel more like Marshall. I mean, I think particularly because I just introduced the other Legion getting involved, that could absolutely be leaning on force of personality. Like, that's that's Lance's whole thing. That's true. That does feel like Lance going up to Dorado and just, like, kind of challenging her directly. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, I'd let you roll discipline here. Take the 3d6. I will take the... I think it's, it's only two, but... Take the 2d6. Better two than one. Roll 2d6. Nah, it's a four. That's fine. Two ticks is better than none. We take those. Yeah. Two ticks plus the one from Mal. Up to five out of ten. That's not bad. (laughs) Yeah. Well, just to finish this, just in time to end (laughs) the game. Yeah, we probably should have done this first. Oh, well. The yard is filled with the sound of swords clinking as they hit one another. People from both halves of the Legion are cheering and jeering at the competitors. Mal's at her forge with a big stack of books next to her anvil. as She swings her hammer, catching up on repairs, sharpening edges, smoothing dents. Rookies are walking around with little pieces of cake and tiny breads. 
And just for a moment, everything's okay. Oathsworn is an actual play podcast created by Devin Nelson, Gavin Frazier, Chris Allison, Matthew Guzdile, and me, Brendan McLeod. All music for the show is created by Devin Nelson. Find it and more at devindecibel.bandcamp.com. Find a link to their music in any of the games that we've played in the podcast description. Follow us at Oathsworn Pod on Twitter or Oathsworn on co-host. Until next time. <laughs>